Hey everybody, Chris here from It's Mead Made, and today we are going to be reviewing the new Flash Forge Adventurer 5M Pro. So, let's get into it. Alright, so before we even get started, I just wanted to give, I guess, my disclaimer that this video is not sponsored by, it's not endorsed or anything like that when it comes to Flash Forge. Now, they did send this to me for free because they asked if I would be willing to review it or just test it out. And I said, yeah, absolutely, as long as I can give my unbiased opinion of what I really think about it. And they were on board. So they're probably seeing this for the first time just like you guys. But when it comes to it, this is just going to be what I really think about it. Now, I'm going to be breaking this down into a few sections. First, I'm just going to be talking about the specs for you. Then, I'm going to go into the features of this printer. And also, I'm going to talk about what really sets this thing apart from other 3D printers on the market right now. Then, I'm going to be talking about my thoughts on the room for improvements when it comes to this machine. After that, I am going to explain who I really think this printer is for. And, lastly, what I really think about it. And I'll go ahead and I will actually chapter out this video into those specific sections. All right, so now let's go ahead and get started. Let's talk about the specs of this printer. So first, let's talk about the build size. It is 220 by 220 by 220 millimeters. Now, when it comes to the max extruder speed, it's 600 millimeters a second. And the max acceleration speed is 20,000 millimeters a second. Now, the default nozzle that the printer comes with is a 0.4 millimeter nozzle but it also comes with a 0.6 millimeter nozzle. Now these are special nozzles and you do have the option to actually buy the 0.8 millimeter nozzle and the 0.25 millimeter nozzle. When it comes to the max temperature of the extruder, it's 280 degrees Celsius. And when it comes to the build plate, it can get up to 110 degrees Celsius. The print bed is actually a PEI flex plate that's textured on each side. And with the 0.4 millimeter nozzle, you're able to print PLA, PETG, TPU, ABS, and ASA. And if you use the 0.6 or 0.8 millimeter nozzle, you can use PLA with carbon fiber or PETG with carbon fiber, which is kind of nice. And when it comes to the actual dimensions of this printer, it's 380 by 400 by 453 millimeters. Now this printer comes with all of your Allen keys and screwdriver that you need to be able to work on this, just like all the other printers out there. But it also comes with some bed adhesion glue, which is really nice to be able to make your prints stick to the bed better. And the snips that come with it are really nice. They are very high quality, they're a lot better than some of the other snips that come with 3D printers. It also comes with a SanDisk USB drive, which is really nice to have instead of some of those cheap knockoff ones that you just instantly have to replace. And the last thing, it comes with this 0.6 millimeter nozzle, which is really nice that it automatically comes with another size that you can easily swap out. Now, Flash Forge claims that you can be up and running in 10 minutes with this printer out of the box. You can be up and running quickly, but I don't think 10 minutes because you have to unscrew all of the screws that are holding the build plate in place because of shipping. Then you also have to go through this like nine minute process of it adjusting and calibrating to the bed. But that being said, I think within 15 to 20 minutes, you could be printing your first test print off of the jump drive it comes with. Now, how easy is this printer to use? Honestly, it's pretty easy. The screen interface is very intuitive and it, what I really like about it is there are certain areas like when you're changing filament that it gives you the instructions right there on the screen. So you don't really have to figure it out. You just have to read along and do it. This is really nice when it comes to some of those things like changing filament for the first time. It'll actually explain everything you need to do. So I really like how the interface works with this printer. So when it comes to the build plate, I honestly, I love some things about this thing. It's got a handle on the front so you can easily grab it. And that is very important when you're actually printing at higher temperatures and you're pulling it off right when it's done because that build plate can get pretty hot. And also when it comes to the flex plate, it goes back in like a dream. Like, I have messed with so many different printers with these flex plates that are magnetized, and they're hard to align and get in there just right. 
This printer, I mean, it just has these little notches and you just slide it in and let go. It is beautiful. I know it doesn't seem like a big deal, but those are one of the things that you're doing a lot, putting a plate in and out. And when you can click it in perfectly every single time, I think that really matters. Now Flashforge says that this printer can go 600 millimeters a second with the extruder at max. Now it can when it on certain parts of the print, but when it comes to the outer shell of this printer, you can only go up to 300 millimeters a second. This is one of those things that in the slicer, it will not allow you to go any higher than that. And that's just something that I think you should know. Now when it comes to the slicer, Flashforge has their own slicing software called Flash Print 5. And that's what I was using this entire time. Now it does say on their website that this printer is compatible with Cura, Prusa Slicer, and Orca Slicer. And I looked in Cura to be able to add this profile, but Cura does not currently have any profiles for this printer. And my personal thoughts, I think it's just because it's such a new printer. All right, so let's take a second and talk about the noise of this printer. There are some printers out there that look just like this and are just as fast and everybody knows and loves them, but those things are louder than anything and I'm not going to name names. But Flashforge claims that this printer can print under 50 decibels of noise and I took my decibel meter and to tested it out and they're 100% right. It averaged to be around 50 decibels. It did spike up a little bit for certain processes, but for the most part, the thing is quiet. Now, the printer does get a lot louder if these doors are open while you're printing, if you're trying to get more airflow through there. But when you have them closed, it's got this foam seal all around the edges, and it really does help. It gets a lot quieter. The last thing about this that I absolutely want to just mention that I don't think anybody will really talk about is this thing needs to be put on a stable table because this table I'm on right now, it's just a regular little table. Like it, There's not a lot of strength to it. This thing moves my table back and forth and shakes it a lot. But when I put it back in my studio on one of my wire shelves, it was perfectly fine. So just make sure that wherever you're going to be putting this, you have it on a stable surface. You don't want this thing shaking like crazy and knocking stuff off of your shelves or anything like that. So let's talk about what really sets this apart. And these are just my opinions of what I think makes this thing different than all of the other ones out there. The first one on the top of my list is the flex plate. The PEI flex plate is fantastic of how it slides in and out. And I just don't think you should like overlook that. When you're looking at a printer, you want to make sure that the thing that you're doing the most is easy to do. Now I've got another printer like this one that it prints wicked fast and you guys have seen me print on it. It is great, but the flex plate is a pain in the butt sometimes to lock in in the right way. This one, I mean, it's just like one-handed easy and it's done. Now the other thing is how you change filament in this printer. It's, it's different than anything I've experienced because you actually have to pull the Bowden tube back that's not connected into the hot end. It just kind of sit, sits inside the hot end. You pull that thing back, you snip your filament, and then you pull your spool back. And then it will extrude that little filament that it had left through the nozzle. Then you can bring in your next spool, push it through, push it down, and just let that load. And this is just a different way to change filament in a 3D printer that I've never experienced. And I didn't know how to do it at first, but that was the nice thing about having those prompts on the screen and it explained to me exactly what I needed to do. So it took me a second to realize what to do after reading it. I was like, oh, okay, and did it. And it, it works great. I kind of like it. Now cleaning out the machine, this is one of those things that you get all of those little strips and boogers and whatever, like when it comes to the filament that gets in the bottom of these machines. And this is something that is so like minuscule, but something that I really like because there is no lip. You can actually just wipe it straight out and it comes right off. Some other printers out there have this lip and you, you basically have to get a shop vac to suck some of that stuff out and it's hard to clean in there, but to keep the inside chamber of this clean is super easy. Now I've already explained how quiet this machine is, but I don't think that's something that should be discounted because this is very quiet. I mean, you can be doing things right beside it and it could be running and you do not hear it that much. You just hear just this little bit. And I mean, 50 decibels, 
that's the equivalent of having like a small fan beside you running. Like, that's really all you hear. Now, one of the coolest features I think this thing has is the quick connect nozzle because the thermistor and heat sink are already in here in this enclosed chamber. And then you have this little connector with the heat sink. And all you have to do is just push those dots in and then pull it out and then swap it back in. Now, if you're somebody that changes between nozzle sizes a lot, I tell you what, this thing is awesome. I, I couldn't believe how really easy it is because I've never experienced a quick change nozzle like that. Now, when it comes to filtration, this actually has a HEPA filter and carbon filtered filters inside the printer. And it can actually circulate just the internal chamber and filter that air or it can actually be filtered through the outside of the chamber. Now, this is really cool for those of you that probably print in like ABS that, you know, you want to filter out those fumes and those VOCs. Now, I think this is a really nice feature that you can choose whether it's filtering just inside of the printer or externally and it's getting new airflow into the printer. And the last thing that I think sets this apart that I really like it has an automatic shutdown. So if it is idle for a certain period of time, it will actually go ahead and turn itself off and you can enable that. And I, I honestly, I like that. I like that I don't just have my printers running and my fans just running because if I'm not printing, I shut my printers off completely. And probably the biggest thing is the cost. The cost I think sets this thing apart. It's only $600. And for $600 to be able to get a printer with all of these different features, I, that's pretty freaking good in my book. All right, real quick, I just have to say thank you. Thank you to all of these amazing people for supporting me on Patreon this month. And if you want to join my Patreon, you will get exclusive access to my private Discord channels where we talk about everything, 3D printing, fixing our printers, those fails that we get and how to avoid them, as well as painting our 3D prints. This community is growing every day and it is awesome. So if you're interested, I'll leave a link below for you. Other than that, let's get back to this video. So now let me talk about my personal thoughts when it comes to room for improvements. Now, the one thing I will say about this is these are just my thoughts and honestly, some of them are my personal preferences. So the first one is the spool holder. It's in the back here. And I know a lot of these printers are actually putting them all in the back now, but it just makes it a pain to change. Because if I have this up against a wall on one of my shelves, I can't get to it very easily. And I have to like turn the unit or pull it out. I just wish that we could have it on the side to where we can easily access it in a way to where we don't have to move the printer every single time. Now, when it comes to FlashForge's slicer, Flash Print 5, it is a nice slicer. It's very easy to use, especially if you're a beginner. There's just some features that other slicers are coming out with now that just make it so much easier that this slicer doesn't have. Like multiple build plates or painting your seam lines, it, things like that. They're not huge things. It just makes your life so much easier when you're slicing your files. Now, the slicer is very user friendly to just jump in and start using it. But for me, I like my slicers and I just want a little more. If it was just a little bit more robust, it could be really nice. Now, that being said, this is compatible with Cura Prusa Slicer and Orca Slicer. So I could jump over to another slicer and configure it for this printer, but I was wanting to use their slicer and I like it, but it could be so much better. Now I know I just like raved about the build plate, but one thing about it that I just wish it had was a smooth side because I have some PEI flex plates that are textured on one side and smooth on the other because I don't always want a textured surface on the bottom of my print. This is textured on both sides. If we just had that little bit of an option to be able to have a smooth side and a textured side, I couldn't be more happy. But this is a personal preference. Realizing it's not really a thing to make it better, it's just what I like to do. Another thing is the camera inside it. The resolution of the camera isn't really that great. It says it's a camera for monitoring and it does time lapses and can take pictures, which it does. I noticed all the time lapses were a little blown out and they're not as sharp as they could be. 
I would love it if we could have a better camera in there so I could actually show this off. And when we're talking about remote monitoring, I, it doesn't have an app with it. I wish they would come out with an app for this because I have another printer that's just like this that has an app to where I can actually see my prints when I'm out of the house and if I notice that something's going wrong with it, I can stop it. Or I can even start another print from my phone. It's just one of those little extras that I think would be awesome if they actually would produce a mobile app for it. And while we're still talking about monitoring, I think it would be amazing if we had some type of AI detection or a LiDAR camera to be able to see if the printer has a good first layer. Because there was times where I did get a bad first layer, and I'll get into that, but it just kept going. And if it could detect something, that would be amazing. And speaking of failed prints, I did get a few failed prints when it came to this thing, and it was for one reason only. I had a bad first layer, and that was because I didn't use the glue. You have to use this glue on every single print, or at least I had to. The only fails I got was when I didn't use this, because it's really easy to use. I just kind of slathered a little bit on there, and it went on, and then my first layers were absolutely perfect. But when I didn't do this, uh, I got some failed prints. So who do I really think that this printer is for? I think, honestly, beginners. Beginners would really benefit from something like this because it's really easy to use. The interface is super simple and you don't have to deal with certain things like, for example, auto bed leveling. It does that for you. You don't have to manually level anything and it just prints. You put in your filament and you just go. I really like that. Another type of person that could get a lot of value out of this is if you're a person that does a lot of prototyping and you need stuff fast because you want to test things out, I tell you what, this thing does print really quick and I was very happy with how this thing is printing. Also, if you're wanting to get away from your bed slingers, if you already have a 3D printer or a couple of them, but they're all bed slingers and you really want to upgrade to more of an XY core machine, this is a really good option for you because it does great. I mean, I've been really happy with the quality of prints that I have gotten. Now, the build volume is only 220 millimeters cubed, which means it's going to be small. Like, this is a small printer, and if you don't have a lot of space and you're limited on that, this also could be a really good option for you. Now, the last thing, would I buy this printer? Honestly? Yeah, I would buy this printer because at the price point of 600 bucks and as fast as this thing prints, it, it's reliable. Like I said, the only fails I got was when I didn't use this stupid glue stick. You have to use the glue it comes with because it just, it wasn't working for me. Maybe if I slowed it way down for a very first layer, I could get that. But I was printing at a fast first layer and it just would not stick when I was printing without the glue added. But once I added the glue, the exact same print would print beautifully. But that was just what I experienced. Other people might experience different things. So I hope you've enjoyed this quick overview of the Adventurer 5M Pro from Flashforge. Now I am writing up a full review of this printer and I will be able to put that in a pinned comment when I have that finished and it'll be on my website. Other than that, I hope you have a great day and I'll go ahead and I'll see you over here in this next video.